Hello, my name is Jameis. Welcome back to the Dandism Project. On this episode, we're going to start by taking a bit of a closer look at the V6 conversion that this car already has. Um, I know in the first episode I only touched on it, so we're going to have a closer look at that and we can see how that was done in this particular car. The conversion um, supposedly was done by a professional mechanic. It turned out to be a TAFE teacher. And um, while I won't say corners were cut, there's certainly some uh, details that weren't attended to. So we'll have a look at all that sort of thing and that'll be um, part of what you'll see in the upcoming episodes is me trying to rectify all the little bits and pieces that need doing. Uh, but that's okay. Um, it's certainly less of a task than doing the conversion itself in the first place was, so it'll give me something to do as well and uh, something for you guys to watch. So let's take a look. Okay, so the engine you see here is a 3.0-litre quad-cam V6 um, known as a 3VZ FE, not to be confused with the 3VZ E, which is found in the uh, Toyota 4Runner. Um, and that's a different engine that's designed for a, uh, a front engine rear drive or four-wheel drive layout. This is um, found in transverse setups in Toyota Camrys. Uh, in Australia, specifically between 92 and 96, you could get this engine. The power output depended um, on what year it was exactly. It's about 140 kilowatts. So it's um, on the surface of it, it isn't a huge upgrade from the 3SGE 2 liter engine that would have been found in this car originally. That had 117 kilowatts, but um, what you don't see on paper so easily, at least not without seeing the dyno graph, is just how much uh, torque and low end power and area under the curve, as they say, this engine has compared to the original 2 litre. It's just um, a whole lot easier to drive. Sounds fantastic, which um, you've already heard in the first video, and um, it's just generally a nice thing. So it's a worthwhile upgrade. Uh, the turbo engine, which of course you find in the Japanese MR2s um, that have that engine, uh, cert is certainly a, a more potent setup. And you can, you know, wind up the boost and, you know, build it for bigger power, bigger turbo, so on and so forth. Um, whereas this is limited, at least without doing more work to get the same potential out of it. But as a starting platform, it's good. And then if you want to actually do some work with it, this particular engine is, as I said, is a 3VZ. It has an iron block and it has aluminium heads, obviously. And it has the lowest standard compression ratio out of all of the... Toyota V6s that um, you might want to fit to this car. The later 1MZ FE is a very similar engine mostly except that the block is alloy and the compression ratio is, is higher from factory plus it has a kind of a finicky computer depending on your point of view. So um, turbocharging an engine like that is a little trickier at least on the surface of it. And then you've got of course the 2GR FE which is found in all the newer uh, Camrys, Orins, depending on where you are. That engine's a 3.5, it's all alloy as well, it's got VVTi, although it must also be said the later 1MZs also have VVTi, and um, it produces uh, 202 kilowatts, I believe. So, I mean, that one, as a drop-in, do nothing else to it except maybe exhaust and whatnot proposition, is definitely the one you want, but because it's quite expensive still, because the engines are newer, then the drawback is price and, and some complication fitting it, although you can get a kit and you can send the wiring harness off to be done, so on and so forth. This one, from a DIY perspective, from a budget perspective, is a whole lot easier. Um, you really got um, a simple proposition here. The engine itself can be had for 500 bucks or thereabouts, or even less. You know, you can buy a whole Camry for 500 bucks in some cases if you're lucky. You still have to spend money on top of that to get it all to work, but it's a simple proposition. Now this particular swap, there are some little issues that haven't been attended to. There's, um, for example, the um, coolant expansion line here from the coolant tank over to the um, filler point. That hasn't been attached to anything, so it's just flapping around in the engine bay. Um, you've got <clears throat> the this particular engine, I'm not sure exactly what year it is, it's got the um, emissions gear up on it here, uh, EGR valve and that sort of thing around the back. So um, it's definitely from an Australian Camry, that makes sense because we're in Australia. But um, yeah, what year exactly, I'm not sure. I, I'd hazard a guess as it might be one of the earlier ones, but um, it's hard to be certain. One of the other things is the throttle cable there, it comes from the cruise control box, it goes over to the throttle. That's kind of just sitting over the top of the cover here, rubbing on there. It's through that hook, but it's um, it's got a bit of pressure on it at this end. I don't really like the way that's set up. That really needs to be attached to something. Um, so that one's looking at. You've got this main coolant hose here that's just flapping around as well. 
And um, I don't know if you can see here easily, but there's a stud down there that it's actually rubbing on uh, or, or potentially able to rub on. And that, you know, it's probably only a short time before that wears a hole in it. And, um, and then I have to replace the, you know, I spring a leak and I have to replace the hose and, you know, that will get fairly dramatic. So that one's probably one of the ones I'm going to address sooner rather than later. So to actually do this conversion, one of the main things you're going to need is um, the engine mount on this side. Um, it's actually a custom made one in this case. When I did it the first time around with my previous car, I um, had one sent to me from the UK by a gentleman who makes them there because this conversion is quite popular there. Um, uh, he was on the two brutal forums and his username was 4v6. And um, yeah, he sent me a nice bracket over. In this case, it was, um, it looks like it's been made separately. I'm not entirely sure, but um, that's it down there. And um, that takes care of the engine mount situation basically because the other three mounts are on the gearbox. So between those three and the one on this side, you've got all the engine mounts you need. So actually mounting the engine in the car is pretty straightforward. The other beautiful part of the swap, of course, is that the gearbox just bolts straight to the engine. There's really no faffing about, no adapter rings, no issues like that. The When you want to make it manual, there is the hurdle that you need to cross of working out the flywheel setup um, because the bolt hole diameter, um, like the spacing between the bolt holes, is different on the 3BZ compared to the 3SGE. So the, what, the cheap way to do it, the easy way to do it, is to just slot out the holes on the flywheel um, and then the 3S flywheel will fit, use your 3S clutch, gearbox goes on, off you go. Um, probably the better way to do it um, is to get the uh, aluminium flywheel from Fidanza. You can buy off the shelf apparently to suit this. And so it's got the correct bolt hole spacing. Uh, it's a lightened flywheel as well, so it's a, it's a quality item and then you, you know, use clutch pieces to suit and um, off you go. With the 1MZ, fitting the gearbox is much the same. There's apparently minor differences in the way it bolts together, but fairly straightforward. Uh, and with the 2GR, I'm not 100% certain. I, I, I think, from what I remember, you have to use the E153, which is the turbo gearbox. This is actually an S54, the non-turbo manual gearbox that was originally fitted to this car, or at least presumably. Um, so it's obviously not as strong. Um, if you're gonna you know, get big power out of this with big mods, then obviously, to do everything properly, you want to address the gearbox as well. There's some people who've had these and, you know, some people have broken them, other people have had fairly good success with them. So the jury's out on whether it's really up to the task of dealing with this engine standard. Certainly, if you buy a manual V6 Camry, it does actually come with a 153 a front wheel drive version of it. The only difference really is the ratios and the linkages are on the other side. So, you know, it's, uh, it, it's, it's arguable what the, real outcome of that is. I'd like to do some long-term testing with the S54 and hell, if you blow it up, it's fairly cheap to replace, especially compared to an E153, but I guess you're not really going to blow one of those up. So that's the gearbox situation. Yeah, and with the turbo gearbox, you also get beefier axles and that requires a few bits and pieces. There's a bracket that um, holds up by the axles in the middle that there's no way to not bolt to on the block. So you've got to fiddle around a bit with that. Uh, can be done. And uh, yeah, that's the setup with the with the drive line. Another little detail that needs attending is uh, there's some wiring here, some big fuses, and I mean I'm gonna guess they're important because I don't remember exactly from doing my previous swap, but uh, those, you know, I, I don't really think they should be flapping around separately there. Maybe they should be in the fuse box. That'd be ideal. Um, there's a diagnostics port that that's flapping around on its own as well. That probably could be at least bolted to something. One of the better ones that's um, flapping around on its own is these lines here and this vacuum canister. Um, yeah, that's just rattling around in there. It's um, it's really quite special that. And it's, um, you can see where maybe it was bolted to something once, but it's broken off. So, you know, I have a strong suspicion it was never bolted to anything in this particular car. But yeah, that's, um, that probably needs to be looked at. Um, the airflow meter and the air filter are held by, down by anything either. There's sort of the part of the factory bracket still there, but um, not attached to anything. So that's just sort of sitting on top of everything there. That needs to be looked at. You can see where the uh, custom fuel feeding has been put on the fuel line there for the to suit the conversion. I don't know if you can see down here, but one of the gear change cables uh, is actually very close to the front exhaust manifold. It's so close that it's pretty much touching it. And that's 
The same problem I had with my previous V6 MR2, it just tends to put it in that position because obviously on the 3S there's no exhaust manifold in that particular spot. I haven't had any issues with it yet. I didn't have any issues with the previous one either. It seems to have a bit of heat shielding on it at that point, which is fortunate. Um, but it could rub through it or it could eventually cause some damage by heat. So that's something else that ideally I'd like to resolve. This here is a, um, looks like a grounding point. That's not attached to anything. So <laughs> I suspect that's meant to be attached somewhere near the strut tower, but it isn't. So that's something else. And um, this one's special. There's a hose coming off the end of this intake plenum here that just goes to uh, an Allen key. For some reason so that's yeah that's um i mean it's blocking the hose maybe maybe um it could be leaking but um yeah that's how it was done so yeah something else i'm gonna need to address and yeah there's a couple of other things too i noticed um i was playing around inside that the um, check engine light doesn't actually light when you start the car um so you can't get that to come on at any point so most probably someone's taking the bulb out of the um, dashboard cluster there so that the light isn't on while you're driving because of an unresolved issue probably caused by sort of adapting the wiring for the conversion. I was able to resolve that uh, with my own conversion so that there was no check engine light normally and if something went wrong it would light up, which is an ideal way to have it. So uh, at least with using the factory computer that's something I want to look at as well. And um, the taco doesn't work, which is odd because uh, I think if I remember correctly I was able to get that working with only connecting a wire or two. Um, there is obviously an issue with the fact that you've got a six cylinder engine which is driving a TACO that was previously driven by a four cylinder signal so it's not getting as many pulses, the TACO isn't accurate but um, there is a way to adapt that using some bits and pieces you can buy and, and put in line with it and that will change the signal to suit. So um, that needs doing as well. The exhaust on this setup is just the standard Camry uh, Y pipe underneath that joins the two cylinder banks together. And it's very restrictive. The one bank actually comes into the other pretty much facing the wrong direction and then has to make a 180 degree turn to go out toward the back of the car. And in this particular case, that's all just married up to the standard cat and the standard non-turbo muffler. So in terms of exhaust noise, it's pretty standard, this one. Um, <clears throat> compared to my previous one, for some reason, this um, you know unshrouded, un unsecured air filter, is um, allowing them a much better induction noise. This one actually sounds magnificent. Well, that's it for this episode, guys. I hope you've enjoyed seeing a bit more about my V6 conversion, and I'll see you next time on the Dandism Project.